Okay. So by now you've already picked up your Arduino. Um, either one similar to this, the this is the Uno, or uh, one like this one here. This is uh, the Mega. This one's by Saint Smart, uh, which I got um, from eBay in a package deal with uh, an LCD screen and an LCD shield, which is uh, we'll get to shields later. Um, uh, but this one I got from Fry's. Uh, it's the uh, uh, OSEP version. Um, since it's open source hardware, there's a lot of manufacturers that uh, make different ones. Um, they're all, you know, different flavors of the same thing. Uh, before we get started, basically a few quick things. Number one, never put your board on metal, um, especially when powered on. As you can see, the uh, traces uh, go through, so this is just like a circuit board. Generally, don't go shuffling your socks around on carpet before handling everything because um, it is sensitive to uh, electrostatic discharge, things like that. Um, just getting to know your, your uh, Arduino better, um, you have, uh, let me get something to point better here, uh, you have a uh, power connector for a, a DC power inverter, uh, you have a USB power, it can be powered either way. Um, for the time being, we're going to go and power it off the USB because we'll be using the USB uh, for serial communication, uh, and for uploading the sketch, uh, which is the program. Um, you also see, you know, this one's got, you know, headers here, here, and along the back. Um, different styles, like right here, uh, you'll have your power, uh, you have your reset, your 3.3 volt, your 5 volt, two grounds, uh, and a VIN for power. Uh, all these are analog in. Uh, all these are digital. Um, these are pulse, PWM pins or uh, pulse with modulation pins, um, and then these are uh, transmit receive pins. These pins can all be input or output, same with the, the uh, digital. Um, analogs are always analog in. Um, so yeah, that's, and then there's, you know, your reset button. Uh, this pin header right here is for uh, actually, you know, programming the bootloader chip. You won't actually use that. Um, same thing for this one up here. Uh, you won't be using those. Uh, for the Uno, uh, it's pretty much the same. This is an I2C uh, header, um, which we'll get to later as well. It's a micro USB, um, again, DC jack. Again, um, you're not pretty much the same. The reset, the 3.3, the 5 volt, uh, two grounds, and a VIN. Uh, less analog ins, only five. Um, a transmit receive, a bunch of digital pins, and these uh, 11, 10, 9, 6, 5, and 3 are PWN uh, or pulse width modulation pins. PWM allows you to um, do some dimming with uh, like mean well PWM uh, or P the mean well drivers that end with uh, P rather than D, um, which will allow you to do some dimming things like that. Um, so that's the basics of it. Um, you'll also have hopefully gotten a breadboard. Uh, this is not necessary, but it makes things a little bit easier. Um, otherwise, everything just kind of spiders out of your uh, your Arduino. Um, especially when it comes to doing things like power, because as you can see here, um, th the way a breadboard is designed, you have all these, you know, pins and, or, you know, holes in kind of a grid formation, um, and they're labeled, um, in this case, numerically down 1 to 30, and then alphabetically uh, A through E on this side, and uh, F through J on this side, and then you have a positive and negative bar on both sides. Uh, this one's actually, um, I don't know if you can really see here, I can actually break these off, um, and it's got a sticky back, um, which is kind of handy. Uh, so these two side power bars can come off, what have you. Um, why is this important? What do, you, what do you really need to know about this breadboard is, um, if I were to take a jumper wire, which, let me grab one of those, um, and take, say, my Arduino here, take this jumper wire and plug it into my ground, and then take this ground and plug it into the ground on the breadboard here. This bar now, uh, running down, is all grounded. So, if I took another jumper wire from this ground to 22, let's say, not only is all of this a ground, 22 from here to here is a ground. So running horizontally. So power bars are vertical, 
all these bars are common uh, to each other. They, they all basically have continuity um, across each other uh, horizontally. Same thing with the positive. If I were to take this and stick it in, say, oh, the 5 volt there and bring it to the positive there. Let me move it so you can actually see it. I can plug it anywhere I want to. Um, I just happen to plug this one into 1 and this one into 5. Uh, this is now a 5 volt power bar. So I can, instead of having to splice this wire a bunch of times, if I have, you know, 20, 30, 40, 100 items, you know, whatever, that I need to, uh, that actually is too many pins right now uh, to go across there. So I can do, you know, that's now, that's a white 5 volt, that's a blue 5 volt. So I can make, you know, row 14 all 5 volts, or row but see, like 22, which we made ground, I can make 22 on the other side 5 volt. I, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing that, you know, for right now, just because it can get a little bit confusing. So, as you can see, we already have a spaghetti mess here. Um, that being said, um, with this first project we're going to do, we're going to need a few things. Uh, one is a D18B20, which is I'm sure we can't really focus in on the, the numbers on there. This is the standard package for D18B20, which is um, this little kind of half cylinder. Uh, it's a rounded flat side uh, with three pins, um, which will, I mean, if, if I were to hold my hand, you know, fingers over it, would register temperature that way or just ambient room temperature. However, you know, as useful as that is, really what we're going to do right now is use this, which is this inside a metal uh, aluminum housing that's been heat shrinked and waterproofed. Also comes with a very handy long cable with um, three leads coming out, black being ground, uh, red being uh, positive voltage, and yellow being the, uh, the signal uh, that we're getting out. Now, uh, the benefit of the uh, DS18B20 is you can chain them, uh, run a bunch of them in seri uh, just kind of in series of each other uh, using just a single wire back to your Arduino. Um, so we can have, you know, the sump, we can have uh, hood temperature, uh, display tank temperature, um, you know, LED temp, a bunch of different things basically. So again, this is just a jacket of uh, version of this. Um, now, to run a DS18B20, you're going to have a few things. First of all, we're going to need ground, so um, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the Mega here because it's easier for me to work with. Um, just due to sheer size, we'll take the ground and we'll just uh, pin it to negative there. And we'll also take the 5 volt and we'll put it over to 5 volt there. Uh, now, what this also requires is a uh, what they call a pull-up resistor, which um, we have right here. Uh, can't really make out the colors there, but it's a 4.7k um, ohm resistor. Uh, I'm this one's I think a half watt. Looking at the size of it there, uh, it really doesn't matter as it is a pull-up resistor. Now. How these work, I mean, it doesn't matter. There's no polarity to a resistor. It's just resistance. Um, so there's no positive side and negative side. You're not going to mess it up here. Um, obviously, uh, you can just bend it. And this needs to go between 5 volts and your signal wire. So what you could do is go, you know, from one of these 5 volt, this 5 volt bar there, and let's just say to E30. And it would go like that. Uh, and then you could take your signal wire, which is the yellow wire here, and plug it in somewhere, you know, uh, 30C, let's say. You get that in there, and then you'd run your ground to ground, and your positive, you'd run over to positive. That's all well and good. I, however, prefer to bend my resistors uh, like this. And there's a reason for that. Um, reason being is I can go like this 
uh, stick that in 30B and 28B. Get that pressed in so it's nice and you know, flush. You can then take a jumper for positive, jumpering this to 28. Uh, let's say 28A, doesn't really matter, any, any of the bars, because again, that's all continuous across there. And then I could then just go, you know, take this one, stick it in there, stick the uh, positive right beside it uh, to the positive side, and then the ground to say 25, and then just run a jumper from there to ground. This obviously takes up a lot less space and is a lot less cumbersome to work with than this, um, just in sheer size. Here's another one I have bent. Uh, this is a 330 ohm resistor that I use for preventing burning out LEDs. Um, just not high wattage LEDs, but uh, you know, these little guys. Um, so yeah, I mean just, and, and this is actually pretty simple to do, I mean you just pre-bend it, you, know, you take this guy, you bend it straight, you loop this around to get it to about there, you gauge the depth based on, you don't know what this, gauge the depth based on how thick your, uh, your breadboard is, so about right there, just bend it. You just bend it back and forth until it breaks off, or you can just get a pair of uh, dikes or um, vice grips, even or needle nose, and make quicker time of it. And of course, it's going to take its time. There we go. So once you get that sheared off, you kind of just align the two pins, um, kind of make the arc as you know as far as you want it, and again, you can just line up about gap of you know one space or two and then just kind of press it in make sure it's fully seated and that way you kind of ensure a good connection and it's better than having the big arch across the breadboard taking up all the space so yeah and you can pretty it up as you want uh, doesn't really concern me right now as this is not going to take up that much space to do um, this project uh, to start with. Um, basically get it working and then clean it up later. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is for the start of this uh, uh, project um, is we'll go ahead and put uh, the resistor in from B1 to B3 um, and get that seated in there. Okay. All right. Then we will take a. I'm just gonna use a red because uh, I'm kind of old school when it comes to DC and uh, I like my positives to be red and my negatives to be black. Uh, we'll go from the um, positive bar here uh, to 1A. I'm also gonna kind of squeeze that together. And then I kind of like to fold these back sometimes. Uh, so they're out of the way. So there you go. I'm going to take a black jumper. And I'll go from the. Uh, uh, we'll do. Got a little pin left in there. Uh, I'll go from the negative bar here to row six. So. Uh, that's uh, 6A. Okay. Now I have mangled the pins or the uh, wires here. I don't know if you can really see that uh, of this uh, pre waterproofed uh, DS18B20. Uh, so I can't really plug them into the breadboard right now. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'll probably pause the video here. Uh, get my wire strippers, strip this, well, cut this off, strip these back, um, apply a little solder to them so they're, you know, not just frayed ends, uh, and then I'll uh, go ahead and plug them in there and show you where to plug them. So bear with me one second. Okay, I'm back. So now, um, I kind of lied, I, I didn't actually solder the ends, um, so there's still a chance that they'll fray, but um, I'll do that later. 
Uh, just got the uh, old trusty set of clines and stripped it back. So let's go ahead and continue on here. We'll take the uh, the uh, positive leaf here, the red one, and we will go to one E. Show me. Get it a little bit tighter here, and we will. Oops, a little too close there. One E, and then we will take the yellow lead. It will go to uh, three E. Except for yeah, it's fraying. And I managed to pull out the other one. Okay, I'm gonna go solder it. Be right back. Okay, I uh, got that handled. So now, uh, I think we're probably kind of blurry there, but we have the uh, red positive lead here in 1D, the uh, yellow signal lead in 3D, and the ground in uh, 60. <coughs> uh, we have a the resistor going from uh, 3B to 1B, and then a jumper from the positive bar here from 1A to the positive bar, and then uh, Right here in 6A, a jumper from uh, the ground bar to 6A. So now, now that we have that done, uh, we have our Arduino here. We'll take a uh, black one and uh, we'll go to one of the grounds, doesn't really matter which one. Uh, and then we'll take our positive lead and we'll go to the 5 volt, like so. Then we'll take uh, red positive and we'll just stick it in that positive bar, it really doesn't matter since they are uh, shared and then we'll go with the negative and we'll put it like that so that's it that's all wired up we'll take our uh, USB here plug that in uh, and then we'll plug it into our computer and uh, go ahead and start uh, programming a sketch and testing it out um, due to the time tonight, uh, I probably will do that tomorrow, but uh, at least you'll be ready for that if you have all this hardware. Uh, if not, um, gives you some time to get it. Um, this will also work with other um, temperature probes, the uh, like TM35, uh, just uh, the DS1820B, uh, or DS18B20 is the one I happen to have on hand. Um, I actually have a couple of them. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and uh, write up this sketch and uh, go from there. Thanks.